Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating PNG textures in Photoshop. Now this came about as the result of a question from a subscriber and what they wanted to do was to create their own texture files that they could use in Photoshop and they sent me a video, I'm going to link to that in the description below, that was created by somebody who was giving away some textures. But her question was how could she create her own textures? So to get started, I'm going to unsplash.com because there are a lot of texture files here that you can sort of borrow for this purpose. So I'm going to choose one of them to work with and I'm going to choose this one primarily because it's almost black and white and because there's some really nice textural elements in it. It's a good starting point for us to work with. So I'm just going to save this. In fact, I've already saved it up here. So I'm not going to save this again. I've already got it accessible. But I find unsplash.com is a good site to look for textures that you can work with. So back in Photoshop, we're just going to open up that file. So here is the texture, but you can see that the image that I was planning to use it on is in a different rotation. So I'm going to start by rotating this with image and then image rotation. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. doesn't matter clockwise or anti-clockwise. So this is our image and it's just a solid image. All these areas are white. Now the idea is to, I think, do two things. Firstly, if you're going to be using these yourself, you can create them any way you like. But if you want to create them for somebody else to use, for example, to sell, then this is what you do. I think you'll want a black texture so people can actually see what the texture looks like. And I think that you'll want a white texture as well. So this is the approach that I'm going to take. Now, that's setting aside the fact that I'm using somebody else's art for this. I am not going to be selling this. I'm just using this for the purpose of helping you understand how you're going to make your own textures. I would strongly suggest that you capture your own images for textures. So we've got this, it's a black and white image. The first thing I want to do is make it more black and more white. So I want to take out this sort of gray bits in the middle. So firstly, I'm going to unlock this layer and I'm going to just do my changes on the image. Not typically something that I suggest that you do, but this is a texture and we can always go back and get the original image if we mess it up. So I'm going to image adjustments and you could use levels or you could use curves. I'm going to use curves. So in curves, these are the black areas of the image. These are the white areas of the image. You can see there's a lot more light than there is dark, but I want to darken up the darks a little bit. So I'll just drag in on this end of the curve and I want to lighten up the light. So I'm just going to drag in on this end of the curve. And you can see that that's really polarized pretty much all of this image. It's either white or it's black and there's sort of nothing in between. That's a nice quick fix for this image. You might also get some mileage depending on your image by dragging up or down on the curve. Down will darken things a little bit, up will lighten them. I might take this down just a little bit, but I'll just click OK. And you can see this is just baked into the image. This is not an adjustment layer, it's gone straight into the image. Now along the edges here, you might be able to see, but this is really yellow. There's some color in this image. So another thing that I would do here is make it black and white. So again, image adjustments, black and white. But when I'm making it into black and white, one of the things I'll be asking myself is what do I want to happen to the yellow? At the moment it's becoming gray. So I could take this across all the way to white and the yellow areas will go to white. If I take it to black, then you can see that these yellow areas are becoming black. So you want to sort of have an idea about the colors that might be in your image and what you want to do with them. And for this, I want to remove them. So I'm also going to have a look at red because where there's Yellow, there might also be red, doesn't seem to be any. And I might look at any of these other colors and see if moving them around has any impact on the image at all. And basically, no, I think it had yellow in it, but that was about all. So I'll just click OK. Now I am left with an issue here in that this side of the image is pretty light, whereas the rest of it's dark. So let's see how we might deal with that. And for this, I am going to use an adjustment layer. So I'm going to target my layer and I'll choose layer and then new adjustment layer. And for this, I'm going for a curves adjustment again. And what I want to do is darken this area. So I'm only concerned with what's happening over here, although what I'm doing is going to affect everything right now. So just ignore the rest of it, but have a look at the left hand side of the image to see if we're salvaging some of the problem that we had. And I'm pretty happy that we are doing that. So I might just take it off a little bit, just trying to get 
a little bit more detail in here. So this is our adjustment layer and I can turn it on and off. So what I'm going to do is because it's affecting the whole of the image, I'm actually going to fill this here, the adjustment layer mask here with black. So I've got black as my foreground color. I'm just going to the paint bucket tool. Okay, so this is a new install of Photoshop and I don't have all my tools. So let me just quickly go to the toolbar options and go and get the tools that I'm missing. All of these are missing, but the one I'm most concerned about right now is the paint bucket tool, but let's make its partner, the gradient tool appear as well. So I'm just gonna click done. So here's the gradient tool and here's the paint bucket tool. Life is good again. Let's go and just fill this with black. So you can see that filling it with black has just reinstated the image exactly as it was. When I click this layer on and off this adjustment layer, nothing's happening. Well, now I just want to paint back in the area that I need to use. So I'm going to the paintbrush tool. I have a legacy brush installed here. I installed the legacy brushes. Go to the fly out menu here and you can get your legacy brushes back. You'll probably find that helpful because the brushes that I ship with Photoshop these days are not the brushes that you're used to. So I've got my brush selected. I've got hardness dial white down. So this is a very soft brush. Size is not really worrying me right now. I'm going to make sure I'm painting with white and I'm just going to paint over this area on the mask to bring back the detail on this side of the image. So all I'm really concerned about right now is evening out this image a little bit so that there's plenty of texture everywhere. So if I'm happy with that, I'm just going to right click on this and choose Merge Down. So this is my texture image. The problem is that it is not transparent. So if I put it on top of another image, I've got just black and white going on top. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to extract the black areas from this image. To do that, I'm going to the layer here and I'm just going to click at the bottom of the layers palette. I'm going to click the plus sign to add a new layer. Now, of course, if your layers aren't showing, you can just go to window and then layers. There it is there. Now I'm going to drag this underneath the image. So the image is on top and there is just a transparent brand new layer on the bottom. So with the image selected, what I'm going to do is knock out the white. So we're leaving black. And there's a trick to doing this and it's super cool. So with this layer selected, I'm going to the FX icon and I'm just going to choose blending options. Now in this blending options dialog is this blend if area. And you've probably looked at it before and thought, oh, I have no clue what this is doing. So I'm just not going to use it. But today it's going to be a savior. What it's going to allow us to do is to drop the white out. So what we do is drag over here. This is the this layer. And if I drag it over, you can see that as I do, the white's disappearing. Now to get a seamless sort of transformation, I'm going to hold down the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac, and this little indicator here will split if you drag on it. So we're getting a sort of evenish sort of transformation from the pixels that we're knocking out here. These are the pixels that are going to be half knocked out and these are all going to stay. So the very black ones are going to stay, very white ones are disappearing and in between there will be some sort of pixels here and there. So I'll just click OK. Now the problem with this and the reason why we added a empty transparent layer below this one is that if we want to bake this effect into the image, we need something to merge it with and we want to merge it with a transparent layer. So I'm going to right click here and I'm just going to merge down. So now I have a layer in this document, just one layer, and it's transparent in the areas except where the black lines are. So this can now be saved as a texture. And to do that in the newer versions of Photoshop, remember you can't save as a ping file any longer. We'll have to go to file and then export and we'll quick export as a PNG file. So I'm just putting this in my downloads. I'm just going to call this texture to PNG. It's a ping file, I'll click save. So now we've got our black texture file and you are then ready to go ahead and use it. I'm going to show you in a second how to use it. But what if you also want to give somebody a white version of this? So we've got it to be black. We're going to make it white. What we'll do is we'll come to this layer and we're going to click here on the lock option. And what that's going to do is lock all the transparent pixels in the image and we're now going to fill it. So I've got white as my foreground color. On my keyboard, I'm going to press Alt and Backspace. On a Mac, that would be Option and Delete. 
And so now we've got a white texture. Now you can see the reason why I'm sort of a little bit reluctant to only make a white texture, and that is because it's really difficult to see. But it is handy as a texture, so I would make them in a sort of pigeon pair. And I probably call them texture one black and texture one white. It's some easy way of identifying them. Having said that, of course, that's not the way I started out, but let's just go and call this texture two white. So ultimately, if I name them correctly, I'm going to end up with two documents, one white, one black, so that I get a choice of textures. Now let's see how we're going to use the texture. And I'm using the same process as the guy did in the video because that was the question that I was asked. There are lots of ways of applying textures to images, so just be aware of that. This is just one of them. For this, I'm going to open, obviously, the image I'm going to texturize. I'm going to choose File, and then I'm choosing Place Embedded and we'll go and get our texture. Now, I'm going to use the white one in this case and just click Place. And I'm going to size it because it doesn't quite fit on this image, but I'm going to size it so it does fit. And because it's texture, most of the time it's not sort of recognizable, so stretching a little bit isn't going to really matter. Now, this texture has been added as what is called a smart object. So to select it, to select all the white areas, we're just going to control and click on this thumbnail. Let's command click on the Mac. So what we've done is we've selected everything that is in this PNG file, which is essentially just the white areas. Then we're going to the image itself. I'm going to need to unlock it because I'm about to delete content from it. So I'm just going to press the delete button. And then if I turn off the texture file and deselect my selection, which I can do by pressing Control or Command D or choosing Select Deselect, what we're left is an image that has the texture removed from it. Now I'm going to add a layer below everything and let's just fill it at this stage with white so that you can see the texture through it. But if we fill it with black, you can see the texture through it is black. So the texture areas are hollow. They're holes in this image layer here through which we're seeing whatever it is that happens to be on the bottommost layer. So let me just go and get red, for example. And if I press Control Backspace with this layer selected, then I'm going to fill it with the current background color, which is red. And so we're seeing red through it. No magic about that. So that was how the gentleman in question actually used his textures. That's his exact same process. The question, of course, was how do you create your own textures? And so this is the method that I used. Of course, with some of these textures that you're going to find on sites like unsplash.com. You're going to have to do a lot of work with the color to get rid of the color. But basically, you want to stretch your image out so that you're getting sort of black and white pixels, not colored pixels, and not a lot of gray pixels so that you can actually then isolate the texture area. This wouldn't be a bad texture. That would actually be quite good. I'd like that one as a texture. This could be made into a texture. This one could too. So just looking at what's available and thinking about what you could do. This one, if you turned it into black and white, would make a good texture as well. But you'll find that there's plenty of content around that you can make use of to make textures yourself. Of course, if you're selling them, then that's a different thing. You need to be using images that you actually have permission to use. I hope this video has been of help to you and that you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.